Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 1. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 5. This is essentially the finale for Superman Lois, well, their mid-season finale, because Superman Lois is going on a seven-week break starting this week, and obviously Supergirl is going to be back, and obviously we're going to be covering Supergirl week by week. But yeah, Superman Lois has been great so far. I've really liked it, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Like I said, this was a great episode, and Superman and Lois has been really, really good so far, and I've loved making videos on it, and obviously we're going to make a few theory videos as we go throughout their seven week break, so make sure to not miss out on any of those by subscribing and turning on notifications. Also, if you want to join me for a Zoom call this weekend on Saturday, become a member, now is the time. You'll be supporting the channel, but also you'll be able to talk Arrowverse, TCTV, what's happened this week with me and your fellow channel members. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this breakdown slash review. So yeah, we start off really great. We have the theme song, and I'm telling you, the music in Superman Lois gets me every week, especially once we get the title card, where its orchestral score just kicks in and... I don't know how to describe it, but it's just this feeling that I get every week when I'm watching it. And so you had that same music, very similar to episode 1 and when it first premiered, when Clark was narrating over what you're seeing and you have the music accompanying that. So you have this great scene right at the start where it's very similar to that. And so Superman's doing a speech about Smallville and why it's a good place. And it's revealed in this that he's been going around being Superman, saving people and saving different things all over the world for like the whole last week. And so it turns out this is because Smallville's Harvest Festival is about to begin and he wants to be free to celebrate and be around his kids, be around the town, and it just means a lot to him. So Clark is super hyped, you get this great scene at the start with the whole family, they're picking the corn, and they're talking about what's to come and like why is it so good, and so Sarah and Jordan going together, you have this really nice moment, and then also right after that, you had Jonathan actually getting dumped, and so that was obviously a major motivation towards his actions in this episode. And to me, Jonathan is weird because he's always flip-flopping between like being his brother's friend and basically going completely against him and being like just this asshole. And, you know, this episode really was the epitome of that because he just gets drunk and then he messes things up with Sarah and Jordan. So he's a bit of a asshole, but I kind of understand it. So at the same time of all of this, Sharon's son actually comes back and so Sharon Powell was this lady that got attacked a few episodes ago If you guys remember she was the one who had the son who went missing because he was gonna go work for Morgan Edge And then he did that troubling phone call But basically he's shown back up and we're like what's going on and I feel like as the viewer We're definitely like something is off This is something to do with Morgan Edge because Morgan Edge wouldn't just like let this guy come back if you know He is recruited as part of his army and so it seems like he's forgotten about like who he actually was he was actually helped out and somehow he's got back to his mum and his mum's like super happy and then at the same time peeking through the window you have Lex who is tracking down Lois Lane and there is this big thing throughout this episode because there is this huge reveal that on Lex's earth he's actually married to Lois Lane so they're pulling out all the stops in the hat to make everything crazy. And so that was completely unexpected. What do you guys think about that? I kind of freaked out when that happened. There was a few times in this episode where I freaked out. I was like, what the hell is happening? Including when the guy uses heat vision, and we'll get to that in a minute. That being Derek, of course. But especially when they actually established that Lois is in fact with Lex on this other Earth. So it's definitely a really interesting twist. Okay, so you have Derek Powell, and he calls Les a lie. He's freaking out and his eyes start flashing, and he shoots out some uncontrollable bursts of heat vision. And so he burns this place down to the ground, and we're like, what the hell? And this was one of the moments where I literally, out loud, I gasped, and I was like, what the hell is going on here? And so I'm sure you guys had a similar reaction, and we knew something was off with Derek, but it turns out it's even more than we thought. And so they've been making Kryptonians, and it all relates back to the mines and the kryptonite, the ex-kryptonite they found last episode. So that was a crazy twist, and we'll get to him and also what else happens in a minute. But we go back, we see some flashbacks throughout this episode with young Clark and Martha, and you see that kind of relationship. Young Superman's really cool, he has this scene where he blocks a bullet, he stops these people, he's intimidating them. 
basically showing off his superpowers, his mum gets scared, and throughout this episode there is a running parallel between him when he was younger and what's going on with Jonathan right now, and so, you know, when Jonathan gets drunk, he lets him off because he knows how he feels and he basically gives him the sympathy vote because it's very similar to what he would have done because he literally left the city and obviously left his mum, that being Martha Kent, of course. And so you have this very touching storyline with him and his mum. And then at the end of the episode, it all tops it off with them dedicating a bench that Martha used to sit at all the time to her. Okay, so Superman finds out about Derek destroying the place with his heat vision, he goes over there, he extinguishes the fire, and at the same time over in the town, Lex Luthor actually talks to Lois, and you're like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? Is he gonna like beat him up or something? But it turns out he's pretending to be a reporter, and so he says he's on Team Lois, and so you get these kind of hints about him and her having a relationship on this other earth, but you don't get it until just a few scenes later where you see the flashbacks to his earth where he's going off to be in the army and he's there with a lot of slain and you're like what the hell is happening here and this is going to be a very interesting dynamic he also knows what's going on with morgan edge and i'm really on the side that i think at some point this version of lex is going to become a proper hero and i think he's going to come to the side of superman and actually try and not take him down anymore and i think this episode might have been the start of that Although he is definitely conflicted because, you know, Superman is with his wife. Obviously, it's an alternate version of his wife. So there's a lot of stuff going on right there. Then we go back to the kids. You have Jonathan being mad at Jordan. He calls Jordan Superboy. I thought that was a very nice reference. That he's literally referring to him as his comic book name, what he will eventually become. He's basically really mad that he's in Smallville. He and that Jordan's life is so much better right now than his, he just got dumped, and obviously there is a lot of emotions going into this. He basically goes and confronts Clark and he's like, I want to move back to Metropolis, I got this friend, and I want to stay in their spare room, and Clark is like, no way, you can't do this, and you know, this is like a whole big conflict, and this is Jonathan's role to play in this episode. So then the Harvest Fest actually starts, you have Sarah skipping out, stick around with her dad for a bit, then she goes back and she actually turns up at the festival. Jordan and her have a few great moments, and then also at the same time, you have Jonathan who goes off and he's been this kind of party boy, I guess, that's what you could call him, and he's drinking, and that's where you get that conflict between them, between Sarah and Jonathan, and also Jordan, because Jordan's like stuck in the middle between all of them. And so then we go to one of the most interesting parts of the episode, and it's this. Derek and Lesla La are together, so I totally got Twilight vibes, because Lesla's definitely using him, and you can see that by how he dies at the end of this episode, because basically he's been used as a test subject and if you guys remember in Twilight what happens is there's this one guy who's going around and he's actually working for this one lady who's been recruiting an army to take down the other vampires so I just thought that was an interesting parallel to bring up and so at this point Derek goes into this machine and it seems like this is a way to control his powers or basically restore them because before they were going crazy because he couldn't control his heat vision he had to get away and he's met up with Lesla. It's also very important to note that they called her Leslie in this episode but her real Kryptonian name is Lesla La and that's why I've been calling her that because that's her comic name. So we're going to stick to that for now but we might change to Leslie if they don't ever refer to her as Lesla La. And so Derek is in this machine, it turns all orange you know something is about to happen at this point. And so Derek and Lesla face off against Superman. And Derek's like, protect the asset. Superman sees the asset. It looks like some sort of Kryptonian rock. Maybe it was the thing that we saw last episode, but it's a way to resurrect people and actually give them Kryptonian powers. So it's very, very powerful. And so Lesla is still alive. She's protecting it. She probably took it away from there while Superman goes off and fights. Derek and so Derek is not a normal Kryptonian because at this point Lex is chasing after Kal-El as he calls him and so Lex's AI doesn't detect Derek as a Kryptonian because Derek is actually dead he just is resurrected and has the powers of a Kryptonian and that's because he's being artificially enhanced and so obviously we don't know the specifics as to how he was brought back to life but it's something to do with the asset and the asset is still there 
and Les is going to be using on other people, presumably, in the next few episodes. And so, yeah, you have this great scene with Superman chasing in the air, flying after Derek, and Derek uses his heat vision, he burns down this barn, he tries to burn the cornfield, but, like, Superman is basically there, stopping everything from being destroyed. At the same time, he's trying to stop him, but also on the ground, you got Lex, so it's a really great scene where you have all these different parallels, you're like, what's going to happen? And so Lex actually shoots them down from the sky. And also it must be noted that Derek knows he's called Kal-El. I'm not sure if that is public information that Superman is Kal-El. However, it does seem like they have some sort of insight as to Superman's powers and who Superman is. Because they are basically modeling their resurrected soldiers as Superman clones. So they get shot down from the sky by Lex. Lex goes over there. He doesn't actually find them. And Derek actually kills himself. So he's able to use that heat vision energy with inside of him, rather than being captured, he kills himself and he basically explodes and disintegrates by using that. I thought that was a really cool use of CGI and it's very interesting and it just shows how committed he is. Obviously he's dead already, so it doesn't do that much harm to him, however, it does harm his mother. And so that's interesting how committed he was to Lesla and to Morgan Edge's plans. Okay, so you get Clark, he goes back home and he lets Jonathan off because he did a similar thing before and like I said, you have this whole back and forth between Lois and Clark and she's like softy, which was a really priceless moment to me. I really, really liked that and so Lois feels really bad for Derek and his mum, mainly for his mum because basically she just got him back and now he's just dead again. So, I mean, that's a whole big thing that she's going to have to go through. Obviously, we probably won't see most of it, but maybe that character does show up again because she is heavily linked to what is happening with Morgan Edge. And now they know that Lesla is linked to what's going on and Lesla works for Edge. I think they're going to start figuring out that he's found that ex-Kryptonite and he's using it to start an army. So it's only a matter of time before Superman and Lois probably go down to the mine and find out that there was kryptonite there. And so it turns out what Derek's body does, it kind of shifts and kind of shakes, just like Tag's last episode. So it seems like Tag has been exposed to this as well, and I don't know if Tag's actually died or not. However, he definitely has some sort of similar powers to what Derek was doing, even though Tag didn't use heat vision or anything. And so Lesnar is now on the watch list, they know something else bigger is happening with Morgan Edge and what he's planning because he's literally creating and resurrecting people and he literally said he was resurrected to Superman, so Superman knows that and now Lois Lane has a lot more information and that whole storyline is going to continue to build up over the next few episodes. Obviously we're not going to get it next week. But we're going to get it in about seven weeks time, we'll continue, I'm sure we'll get some trailers and stuff in the meantime, and then we'll get back to that story. And so talking to Morgan Edge, he actually helps the town because all of their donations got destroyed in the fire that Derek caused, and Morgan Edge does what he's been doing, he plays the charade still, like he's the great guy coming to save Smallville, he basically buys all of those items and then some. And so they're very grateful for it. So this goes on and then you get that really nice scene talking about the bench and Martha and the impact she had on the town. So I have to say I really did enjoy the flashbacks in this episode and how it all linked together. I thought it was very smart and it definitely paralleled really well to what was happening in the present day. And so if we jump back to present day we've got Lex, he's spying on Clark and Lois. Then he goes back into his van and so Lex is annoyed and it turns out he is married to Lois on his earth. Like we mentioned, that was a major shocking moment that kind of blew my mind and I'm sure it blew your minds. I want to know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. Also, just after this, you have Jordan and Sarah. They're having a great talk and I really do like them two together. I think they really have a great dynamic on screen. And so the ending, it sees Jordan walking home. It's lit by the moonlight. It looks really cool. And so Jordan gets beaten up by none other than Tag. So Tag Harris is back and it seems like he is in some sort of uniform, kind of reminded me of like the X-Men and their school, because we know that Tag was sent off last episode to that evil meta school, and I'm presuming it's evil, because why would he escape, and he's basically back, and he is blaming it all on Jordan, that's why he's beating Jordan up, for sending him, or for allowing him to be stopped, and to be sent to the school, and I think this is going to be a thing that the kids are going to deal with throughout the next few episodes. They're going to probably go to that school and find out what's going on, 
and it's definitely not a great place to be because he's broken out and if I'm honest I think it's probably related to Morgan Edge in some way. But anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video, if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new. Also remember now is the time to become a member if you want to join our Zoom call this Saturday with your fellow members and me. All you need to do is click the join button if you want to support the channel and become a member. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, remember my Flash review came out earlier today, also my Flash trailer breakdown for episode 5 is going to be coming a few hours after this video, but I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.